What is going on guys? I'm Consumer Check Review and today we're checking out the MK870. This is a DIY kit and let's get right into it. We're using Akko's new keycaps, hand lubed Akko Jelly Blues. These are tactiles. And then we're using a black Aseni custom coiled cable. These are kind of nice and super affordable for like 25 bucks. But let's get into this board and pulling the tab up, getting this open. Here we go. Ooh, a nice plastic cover right away. This thing's like under 70 bucks. I think it's like 64 a very thick plastic cover, like overly thick, but whatever. And then they include some PE foam in there, which is nice because we're gonna use this to mod it. I've been really into creamy builds lately. Creamy builds are where it's at. So we're gonna save this for later. Okay, but here we go. The case itself, I got it in like this smoky black colorway. Um, I think it looks really good. Doesn't sound bad. And there is actually screws in the back, which is nice because I don't think this is a clip or maybe it is a clipped board. I don't know. I think this is a clipped board, but it feels really solid actually. More solid than I was expecting. It doesn't flex very much and it's got foam or it even kind of looks like silicon. These freaking cases, bro. Uh, and then it does have tighter clip-in stabilizers. This is obviously a TKL form factor. And then over on the left side, we have like a cap. Is that the USB-C? I don't know what this is. Yeah, this is a USB-C. It's deep in there. Then we have a USB-C there and another USB-C over here. I've never seen that before. Kind of strange. That is very strange. Hmm, first time for everything. Okay, but overall, I mean, look at this thing. It looks good. I like the smokiness and we do have flip up risers in the back. Then moving on, you get some paperwork. Also don't download the software for this. It has a virus on it. Don't do it. And then we have a basic USB-C cable and a switch puller, keycap puller. And then that's kind of it. Okay, so let's get right into this. All right, now the first thing that I'm interested in is the stabilizers right here. Now we can see they do have this like rubber on the space bar, which you should be able to pull up from here, which is very cool because that's gonna add to the dampening. I wanna see how this thing is tuned with the stabilizers because they are pre-lubed stabilizers. I don't like it very much but they are pre-tuned and lubed. So we're gonna see how good they are. So let's take out our switches here. Nice, beautiful switches up there. These things, super nice looking switches. And then we're just gonna kind of try a couple of them. Again, these are south facing LEDs, which is awesome. We're just gonna try a couple of them. And then opening up our keycaps. Akko also does a great job packaging their keycaps. We have the novelties up here which are probably just different colors. And then we have the main set right in here in a beautiful box. Oh my gosh, this is great. All right, and then those are the keycaps. They look absolutely fantastic, absolutely stunning. And get this, they match the switches and the keycaps very well. That's kind of coincidental, but I like it. All right, so we're gonna try the space bar, left shift and the enter key. Let's see how they are. I'm gonna hold them up to the mic. That is actually surprising. There's a little bit going on on the space bar here, but these, those are actually pretty dang decent. I think all I'm gonna do is just see if we can put some dielectric grease on there, but they sound pretty good overall. I think I'm gonna leave them and just do some dielectric grease because that's pretty good. I'm not even gonna like mod them or anything. That's actually quite impressive. I do like that. All right, now because I really wanna get to know this board in specific, we're not gonna do too many mods to it. All that we're gonna do is open it up. These screws are really tight. Okay, those two screws. And then I think pull those tabs out. Then I think this is a pop-off again. So we're just gonna kinda go around the edges. It sounds like I'm breaking things, but I hope I'm not. Oh, that sounds bad. Guys, comment below if I should be doing this a different way. Oh, I cracked it right there. No. Bro, how do you take this apart? There's screws behind these. We just scratched it up a bunch and there were screws behind the standoffs or the flip up risers. Um, that's why it cracked. Okay, so learn from my mistakes. Take off the screws behind the flip up risers and we should be good to go now. <laughs> yeah, and now it comes off easily. So it's a little bit cracked there. Uh, however, with having screws in there and me doing all that, uh, came off not too bad. So it's very similar to the TM680 actually in that fashion. It's like exactly the same as the TM680, at least I think that was the board. All right, so here it is. We can, can we lift this off? We should be able to lift this off. Or no, because those are all connected with standoffs, right? Because this isn't a gasket mounted board. Scratch the plate up a little bit there. This is a screw in board, which uh, I don't mind a ton. Unscrew all the screws. That should be all of them. And there we go. Okay, so there is the case case right here. And then this is the plate and PCB, quite heavy. And a little note, we did also see this on the Red Dragon K6 or K530 Pro. This plate actually bends over. You see how the plate actually bends over, but this one does it not only in the back, but also in the front. So this is a substantial plate, it's quite heavy. However, one thing to note, which we're gonna get it right here, 
unscrew all of the screws on the back of the PCB. This actually has silicon, like the TM680, uh, or maybe it was the Tester 68. That one has silicon between the plate and the PCB, which is insane. This one also has that, uh, which is also insane for 70 bucks, guys. Now the silicone is fantastic for dampening, but if you want like a more loud sound profile or a more thocky sound profile, you're gonna wanna get rid of that silicon. But if you do want a quiet gaming setup, it could be quite good for that. All right, so let's lift off the PCB. There we go. And it looks like, it looks like you guys were right. You guys said that it supports plate mounted stabilizers does look like it supports plate mounted stabilizers, which is awesome. You can get those screw in stabs in there right there. That is very cool. However, we're gonna be sticking with the stock stabilizers today. We're just gonna put a little bit more dielectric grease on them and then use them like that because I do wanna test them out. Also, they seem like they're pretty good out of the box. Okay, so again, I hate to do it. This silicone is so nice, um, however, we're not gonna use it again. All right, now before we put the PE foam between here, we are actually gonna take these stabilizers out. And first we have to get this little rubber piece out. You just push it and it comes out pretty easily like that. Do it on this side as well. All right, now for this section, we got our toilet paper and our plate. And all we're gonna do is push in the pins and then pull our plate mounted stabilizers right out. Set all those down, take them all out. TKL, so you have all five of them, kind of sucks. Now it does look like these are pretty heavily greased, so we might actually just want to lube them or we could redo everything. I don't know. Okay, so I'm gonna set some toilet paper down right there and then we're gonna open these up by turning them sideways and letting these out. Now there seems to be quite a lot of grease on there. So I think I'm gonna redo that. We're gonna kind of mix up the stabilizer lube. I know typically a no-no, but I'm lazy. So first take these off, clean the wires off and then clean the stems off. All right, so now with all the stabilizers apart, let's go through the lubing process. We're just going to be lubing the stem and we're gonna be using Crytox 205G0. So get just the smallest amount, okay? We're not lubing a ton here. Get a teeny a little amount right there and then dab it on the right wall, flip it over, dab it on the left wall and then just smooth it in again. This is really very small amount, okay? Make sure all of that is spread out. Don't over lube this section. Go to the other side that we dab and smooth that out. All right, now we're not gonna be lubing the housing. We didn't really clean it off that well. So then insert this with a side that has two holes facing the opening of the stabilizer, insert it just like that. All right, now do that obviously to all of them and then grab your dielectric grease and your wire and we're just going to dip it into the dielectric grease. We're not gonna do too, too much. So just dip it past that 90 degree point. And then I like to just kind of get a little bit off so it's a little bit more evenly coated. Now I'm not doing too, too much for these specific stabilizers. Every stabilizer is different and you're gonna have to learn that stabilizer if you wanna tune them. So it obviously is gonna take some practice. We're not doing too much this time though. So insert it back into the stabilizer, twist it at a 90 degree angle, and then repeat that for the other side. In past the 90 degree point, make sure there's not too much on there and then insert it back into the stabilizer, snap it into place and we're ready to put the stabilizers back on. Wait, are we? Maybe we're not. And we're not because first we have to take our PE foam that came with this keyboard, which is awesome. We're gonna move these lube stabilizers into the case really quick, kind of push those back. Grab yourself the PCB. Actually, we'll grab the plate first. Flip the plate upside down, take your PE foam, set it on top of that, grab a cutter or an X-Acto knife or whatever, and then we're gonna trace out the stabilizers. So stabilizers right here, and then some more right here, pull those off and the last stabilizer. All right, and perfect. Since that's now all lined up, let's get this out of the way. Bring our PCB back, and then we're gonna flip this back over so that it is the correct way. Line those up just like that. And then grab your plate, insert the stabilizers back into their places. Those are back in. I don't think we need to Band-Aid mod these. I guess we could, but I don't think it's super necessary because they're pretty tight in the board. But again, remember, you can use your own screw-in stabilizers with this board, which is really awesome, but it doesn't come with it, but you could use them, which is very cool. All right, and now with all of those in, grab these little rubber pieces that we put right in between here for the space bar stabilizers, just slip those in. All right, and there we go, ready to put it back on to that PCB. See if you can line it up the best of your ability. And then holding that together, let's flip it over, get those screws, which then go in these little gold spots. You're gonna have to kind of force it through and that actually screws in really easily. This one's quite easy to put back together. So far, I'm really impressed with this case. I haven't actually heard the way it sounds, but just from like the overall build and the south facing LEDs and a lot of other things, and just overall quality, this actually seems like it may be better than a lot of the other ones with the only real big thing that I don't like is not having a polycarbonate plate. If this thing had a polycarbonate plate, it would be really easy to recommend this. Over all of the competition, 
But since it doesn't have the polycarbonate plate, it might be a harder decision. All right, now that that's on, let's flip this over, take your X-Acto knife again, and just cut off the extra PE foam very quickly, very easily. That's all cut off. All right, now with that all cut off, we are going to tape mod the bottom of this thing, and we're gonna do some layers of tape, like quite a few. Here we got some tape right here. Now the trick that we're gonna do here is we're gonna poke hole, poke hole, we're gonna poke holes using this right here every time we do each layer to make it a little bit easier uh, to actually get this on. So I'm not gonna layer it like I normally do. I'm just gonna do normal layers. So this will be interesting to see the difference. All right, now with one of these done, let's grab our case right here, flip this over, and then all we're gonna do is make sure it's all lined up and then press it through and then lift it back up. And there, all of the holes are poked through just like that. Look at how easy that is. And then we just do another layer of tape and keep poking them through. All right, and one more little poke hole. I think we're only gonna do two layers. So line everything up and then, okay. And then I think that one's through as well. Let's see, yeah, and they're all poked through. That did really well, like way better than I was expecting. But let's go, come on. All right, then the only thing left to do is we're gonna do some case dampening. Now for this one, I am gonna use typical EVA foam. Most places have that. All right, so here we got our EVA foam. It's just typical 99 cent EVA foam. Take our X-Acto knife and we're gonna do this in small sections because there's so many little intricate kind of details of this case. So first we're gonna do this section. All right, so that's in there, this piece in here. All right, now that we got all of our whack ass EVA foam in there, now we are gonna take our plate and PCB and stabilizers and mount this back into the case, set it down in there. There we go, take our screws, very simple guys. It's actually a very easy case to mod, very easy. And just to build overall, not even just mod, but this does look like it'd be very easy to mod. Except again, I wish it had that polycarbonate plate. All right guys, with all of the screws in there, this is so simple, so easy. Now all we have to do is just put this back on top. Now the leftover PE foam might be an issue, so let's just see if we can, actually it looks like we're just pushing that down. That might work as well. All right, and then placing the top piece back on top and then putting back the screws behind, remember the flip up risers. If you get this, definitely put it back. And also it looks kind of cool. It looks kind of sus there, but it looks kind of cool in the other places. Uh, so I don't mind the kind of red on the bottom. I think it looks kind of cool. All right guys, and with that all back together, let's flip this over and we're ready to put our switches in. Let's do it. First pack right here and there we go. Remember again, remember south facing LEDs. Hell yeah. And then when you are putting them with the PE foam, make sure not to put them at an angle. Make sure not to do them like this or like this. You can sometimes get away with that. Uh, however, with this one, with PE foam, make sure they're coming in straight and press them right in. All right, guys, and there we go. That is with all of the switches on there looking like a dang ocean right now. Very, very cool. From the side profile, kind of looks weird, but from this angle and that angle, it looks very cool. All right, let's get the keycaps on there right away. And we're gonna check out what is in this novelty box. Okay, so this isn't actually the novelty ones. This is like the, I think this one has even more like a split space bar kind of stuff, which Akko started doing with these new keycaps, which is awesome. I mean, you see here, we have the 2U shift key. For a lot of keyboards, we have the command and control. So if you wanna do Mac, that's really cool. So these new keycaps, a plus, they definitely upgraded them quite a bit. All right, but let's start putting these on. And guys, here is the finished board. This thing looks absolutely stunning. It looks kind of cool because behind all of this like black is the white PE foam. And I think it actually gives it a very, very cool look. But okay, first of all, sound test. I haven't heard this thing. Let's see how it sounds. Oh yes, it's clean. Nice and clacky, but creamy at the same time. I don't know guys, I've been doing so many creamy builds. I'm gonna stop, I'll stop. I'm gonna do a different board next time. Let's listen to this really quick. Stabilizers sound okay. I think I'm probably gonna pull the spacebar out and do a little bit more lube there. But oh my God, look at this thing. You're seeing it on the B-roll shots. It looks super cool. But again, if you wanna check out any of the stuff that I used to mod this keyboard, the keycaps, the MK870, or the switches, or wait, we forgot the Ascendi coiled cable. Actually, it'll be all over the B-roll shots, but we just forgot it. All this is actually super affordable. The keycaps are really good for the price of like 60 bucks. This is like 25 bucks. The case is under 70. The switches are like $10, $12 a pack. Here we go, a super deep black, which I think looks awesome with this. It doesn't fit. All right, and there we go. We just cut a little of the plastic away and that's it. And then having our nice black curled cable, we'd have to get it twisted into the right direction, but all you gotta do is take a hairdryer, twist it a little bit, 
after it's warmed up. And there we go. That looks so good, guys. All right, but take a listen to the full sound test of the MK870. Take a listen. <laughs> 